Coach, a 10 to nothing win over Lindsey Wilson. Uh, the first time Lindsey Wilson's been shut out in over five years. I'm sure you probably could remember that if you thought about it, but nevertheless. Presbyterian. There you go. This was as old school as old school gets, this type of game. Physical, smash mouth, and you hold them to nothing. Just your overall thoughts on today's performance. Yeah, I'm just so proud of our kids, our guys. Uh, we knew it was going to be a physical, hard-fought contest. Uh, would we have predicted 10 total points? Maybe not, but we knew that uh, we were playing a really good offense. Uh, hats off to our defense. I mean, man, our defense obviously played just outstanding. Uh, great plan, but it takes players to go execute. Mm -hmm. And we're going against a defense on the other side that is also very, very good. Uh, you know, giving up 50 rushing yards a game and, you know, I mean, just really gaudy defensive numbers. Uh, I thought our guys did a great job of executing in a lot of ways on offense. Uh, and we knew special teams was going to be a big factor. And I thought we had a little bit of an edge on, on some of those hidden yards of field position on special teams. But I can tell you, our guys prepared extremely well this week. And, you know, I had a confident feeling, you know, coming into today uh, because of the way that our guys prepared and, and how they have bought into that. I'm just really proud of our kids. You go throughout this entire game, and a Lindsey Wilson team that averages 45 points a game, they don't get any closer than your 19-yard line. Yeah. You alluded to it earlier about the players executing out there, but how about your defensive staff oh. and, the, and the game plan they put in to keep that talented offense nowhere threatening the end zone? Yeah, tremendous. I mean, just a tremendous plan. and It's one of those things, obviously there's a lot of familiarity, and, and you know some people know those things, but our offenses are pretty similar. Uh, some of the same terminology. So both of us were doing things to cover up, um, you know, uh, signals and, and at a time where Michigan's, you know, that's focused. I mean, we're both doing things to cover those things up. So, you know, they went completely wristband. We huddled most of the game, which is very unlike us. And I think it just comes down to showing how much our guys bought into the preparation work uh, of what went into it. I thought Coach Perrin and our defensive staff had an awesome, awesome plan. And our guys went out and executed it. I'm just so proud of how they played. You mentioned on the other side of the ball, offensively for your team, just putting, making enough plays. Let's go back to that 41-yard touchdown pass from Garrett Slunaker to Dylan yeah. Warren. What did you see right there? You were taking vertical shots all game long. Yeah. That one they, they hit on for the big score. Yeah, and, and you know the neat thing is there, Garrett checked that play uh, at the line of scrimmage. We had a different pass play called. We were looking for a specific coverage. And the safety uh, rotated in kind of a way that we didn't want on the pass play that was called. So we've been working on the past two days of, hey, if we get that coverage, let's check it back to this. And it's easy to do that in the, in the film room, in the meeting room on Thursday. But to do it with the, the stands packed and come out and then execute and deliver that ball and have Dylan Warren go make that play and to get the pass protection in there. Those, you know, those are the guys... Uh, this is a great defensive line pass rush we were going against, and I thought our O-line did a really good job. So that's one of the neat parts about that play. Yeah, you see the throw, you see D. War make the catch, but to know that that was a coverage check, our quarterback checked it into the line of scrimmage, got us into a touchdown play, that's, that stuff's pretty exciting. You were able to establish the running game kind of slowly as the game went along, yeah. picking up nice yardage, but looking at the final numbers, Darius Neal and Isaiah Cobb combined for 185 all-purpose wow. yards. What yeah. can you say about those two, given that there were no big chunk plays on the ground or through the air with those two, but they kept at it and kept at it, and I thought they wore Lindsey Wilson's front down as the game went on. Yeah, I thought in the fourth quarter we were wearing them down for sure, and, and you know that last drive was was pretty awesome to see us, and we would have liked to finish and convert that, uh, but that last drive was was pretty awesome, um, and seeing other alums, you know, was pretty <laughs> awesome too. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we came out, we knew they were great stopping the run, like I said, 50 yards a game. So we wanted to work the flats, and we wanted to get the ball out of the box in some different ways, and, and that's where some of those short passes. I think Darius and Isaiah, I believe, had five receptions at halftime for about 50 yards, and that was just really stretching to the flat and trying to keep them honest in the run game. I thought our guys did a great job of executing the plan. 44 minutes time of possession wow. for your team in this game. I, incredible. Yeah, I've never been a time of possession uh, person who's put a lot of thought into that uh, but today it was because of, of the way we played on offense and defense and, and getting off the field quickly on defense uh, and I thought our offensive line and those guys tight ends you know just did a good job it, it was not easy it was not easy um, but you know hats off to them
emotional game for you, I know, given your history uh, at Lindsey Wilson. I saw you hugging some players as the game was winding down and afterwards. Uh, just your overall emotions on this day facing that team and knowing what you accomplished there and now you come here, along with going against some of your former players. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, mixed emotion. You know, obviously the excitement is the excitement level is extremely high. Um, but, you know, there's a, a, a just a general oddness to it. Um, it's not sadness, but it's respect. I think it's respect for that program, respect for that, those players, um, you know, the, that, that coaching staff across the way. Uh, I have the utmost respect for, you know, how they go about their business. And, you know, that has always been the case there, and it will continue to be the case. That's a great program. Uh, so it's just uh, it, it's a, an odd feeling. Um, but it's just respect of that program and, and appreciation of what our guys have invested and how they have embraced me, uh, my family, uh, Coach Thrower, Coach Dam Schroeder, and the rest of our coaching staff. Our players have, have uh, bought in and really adopted us, and, and, and you know that's so heartwarming. 4 0 now in mid South Conference play. All, the last remaining unbeaten, two games to go. Very emotional game coming next week yeah. when you when you go to Cumberland's. Yeah. Given the history there, uh, what happened here a year ago, but you're in the pole position now as far as the conference to potentially win another conference championship. Uh, talk to us about that matchup with Cumberland's and ultimately what you need to do to try and move to five and zero. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be a tough game. You know, it's going to be senior day for them. Uh, they're going to be terribly excited to have the opportunity to, to play in that environment against anybody. And then you know you come in and as the current first place team comes to town, you got a shot to. to knock them off, um, you know, that's going to be a tough, tough game. That's a well-coached team. Uh, that's a physical football team. And we've got to have a great week of preparation and, and be ready to go.